Hi friends! My name is Valerie Poppy. I'm a decorative artist based out of New Richmond, Wisconsin. I work with loads of clients and interior designers all over the Twin Cities. And I am so excited to show you how to use the Caproni Plaster App on a project at your house today. So here are the things that you're going to need. First things first, you are going to need your clean slate. All right. It's it's like an Amex card. I don't leave home without it, okay? <laughs> I don't start a project without clean slate. All right? So we need our clean slate. Then, of course, the star of the show. We're going to need our Caproni plaster wrap. Guys, look at how much you get with this. Holy cats. I, I'm so excited to show you how to use this today. So we're going to need this. Then... We're gonna need some one-step paint. Today we are using gatherings, and then we're gonna follow it up and use some milk paint. Now I'm gonna use a combination of two. Uh, we are gonna use Elmafi Coast, and we are gonna use Southern Gentleman. Y'all, I love Southern Gentleman. I mean, I love Southern Gentleman in general, but like in the milk paint, it's pretty great. All right, so we're gonna use a combination of these two. Then we're going to use some antiquing glaze. All right. We're going to need our light and our dark wax. We're going to need our dust of ages. And then as far as tools go, we are going to need a couple of synthetic brushes, a natural chip brush. Um, we're going to need a natural sea wool sponge and some sandpaper and a microfiber towel or a dust, a lint-free rag. Anything will do, really. All right, are you guys excited? Let's do this. All right, friends, so here we go. This is our starting base. I've prepped it with one-step paint just to keep us going. And I've already pre-cut some Caproni plaster wrap just so we can speed this up, just a scotch, you know. And now we're gonna use a natural, not a natural, oh, for Pete's sake, a synthetic hairbrush. There we go. <laughs> We're going to use a synthetic hairbrush to lay some water down. And I'm just, as you can see over on the side, I'm just dipping it in some water. Guys, I've tried a lot of different methods in laying the plaster wrap down when I'm doing a furniture project. I've tried, I've tried spray brush brushes. I've tried uh, sponges. I've tried it all. My goodness. And honest to Pete, this is the best one. I don't know. You don't know. I do know why. <laughs> it's because I have more control on this. I have more control where the water goes. I have more control on like how to smooth it out. It's, it's like the, I was going to say Prince song. I mean, technically it is a Prince song. You know, I'm a Minnesota gal, but I guess uh, Sinead O'Connor made it famous, but it's it's that song, you know, Nothing Compares. Nothing Compares. That, that song, you know. I think of Prince when I hear that song. I love Prince. Just, you know, Minnesota gal. It's just my life, man. All right. That and rooting for a team that loses. So as you can see, as I've gone along, I'm just smoothing it out. All right, I'm just laying it down. I'm smoothing it out. And you really want to make sure it gets to laying just right. If you don't make, like if you just slap some water on it and don't smooth it, which is why synthetic hairbrush works great, guys. All right, you're going to get bubbles. On it. It's going to bubble up. And it's also, that's also a clean slate thing. You just really want to make sure your piece is nice and clean. All right. So now that we've got that going, let's move on. Once it dries, it'll look a little something. Just reach across. Oh boy. Like this. There we go. And it's all hard. It is, this is, this is fantastic. This is right where I want it to be. Yes. So now the next step 
is we got to lightly sand this sucker down. All right. And as we do that, we're just making sure that we've got a mostly even surface. Does it have to be perfect? No. That's the beauty of the plaster wrap, guys, is that you're adding texture to something that did not have texture before. This works so great on simple pieces. I am telling you, if you want to see the before picture of this project I'm working on, feel free. Head over to my Instagram page, my Facebook page. I'm at Valerie Poppy Designs. And you can see the before. This is a gorgeous, cute little apothecary that I picked up while I was out thrifting, or as I like to call it, scamping. <laughs> you know, being a scamp. All right, there we go. Just had to blow some of that off. So once that's all sanded, we are gonna hit it with some one-step paint. Today's color, as I told you guys, is in gatherings. We want to stick to something rather neutral. So anything like a spa white would be nice. Um, Italian silver, I've used that. You want something that's like a white or an off-white. You don't want to do anything too jarring. You just want to get a base coat on there. And that's so that when you go in with the milk paint, it's not going to gunk it up and, you know, make your work look, I don't want to say worse, but it's not going to look as nice as if you have a nice base coat on. So again, I'm using a synthetic bristle brush. Guys, I know these are for edges, these type of brushes. I just, I'm, I like them. Again, it's that control. I just think they have great coverage. Speaking of great coverage, I mean, look at the one-step paint. The coverage on that sucker. Boy, howdy. That is, that's some good coverage. All right, here we go. Guys, I am rotten. I don't even put paint down. I, if I really cared, <laughs> if I really thought it through today, which clearly I did not, um, I would have put tape down, but <sighs> that's what happens. We got a saying in my family, guys, sloppy poppy. That's me. Oh yeah. I will clean it up later. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. All right. So once we have this all said and done, we're going to let this dry. And I forgot to mention, when we lay down our plaster, guys, we want that to really dry. Like, we want to give it, like, a good couple of hours. So seriously, get some lunch. Do literally anything else but think about the plaster drying. Like, <laughs> find something else to do. Work on a different project. Like, but let it dry. This guy... You know, the one-step paint, as we all know, it dries pretty quickly, which is why I love it so much. I love it. But the plaster wrap, you really, really, really want to make sure that that is all good and dry before moving on to the next step, okay? So once we have our one-step paint on, it's going to look like this. Now, if you noticed, I did punch a hole through it. All I did was I took a sharp screw, this little sucker, and just, boop, just right there, just punched a hole through. That's all there is to it. So now we are going to do probably my new favorite thing, and that is using milk paint. So we are using, I've already mixed this up, this, like I said, is a mixture of Amalfi Coast and Southern Gentleman, all right? If I was to guess on a ratio, it would be like a three to one or maybe like a heaping two to one ratio of Southern Gentleman to Amalfi Coast. So I'm using majority Southern Gentleman and then just a, just a scotch of Amalfi Coast. 
All right. Now, I don't need a lot today. And I'm just going to mix this up. Where did I put my chip brush? Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Wow, that sounded really Minnesotan. Okay. Every now and then it just ekes out. I'm just going to add just the smallest amount of water. And using my chip brush to mix it, I always, always, always err on the side of not enough water and then gradually thin it rather than way too much water and now now I have too much. Because this, guys, as you know, if you know anything about the milk paint, it is perishable. So if you make too much, like it'll store for a little bit, but it will eventually go bad. Because it's got milk in it. Actually, it's got casein, but that's basically the same thing, you know? All right. Now, if you notice, I'm just kind of, this is still mostly too thick, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. A little dab will do ya. Or as my grandmother would say, tendripa. She was Swedish. <laughs> ah, so that was definitely more than tendripa, but, you know, working our way through. It's fine. Actually, I think that's just the consistency that I want it at. You don't want it too thick. You don't want it too thin. You want to do like a nice one-to-one -one ratio. And as I'm mixing it, I'm just kind of grinding the bits into the side so it gets really nice and mixed up. All right. And here we go. We're ready to rock and roll. Now, I said to originally, like, it's my new favorite thing. Y'all... I, I hate to admit it, I, for a long time, I did not understand the point of, like, I didn't understand milk paint. I was like, it's just watered down paint, ain't it? No, it's not. Like, guys, there are so many beautiful applications for milk paint. This is just one of them. So I'm slightly ashamed to admit the error in my ways. And my thinking, it's like a real pride and prejudice moment here. But now I am firmly on team milk paint camp. Also, you can mix them. Like, look at that color. Just look at it. It is gorgeous. All right, I'm going to get the sides. You also want to make sure when you're working with milk paint, because it is thinner, you want to just make sure that you aren't getting too many drips. All right. So there we go. And then we're going to let that dry completely. Now, the interesting thing, I'm going to do a side by side here because this is kind of my favorite thing about milk paint, is when you mix it up, sometimes, I know I used to be this way, like, ah, it's totally darker than what I thought. Oh, no. Nope, because look at that. Look at the difference between wet and dry. Isn't that amazing? I never thought I'd say this, but I actually like watching paint dry now. It's crazy, I know. All right. Once we have that all dry, let's get on and antique it. Yes. Or, as they like to say in my neck of the woods, antique it. Yeah. So, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to pour some of our antiquing glaze into just a low cup. I'm just using a straight up, straight up amount. I'm not diluting it at all. And now I'm going to use my sea wool sponge over here. All right, I've just had this soaking in some water. And we're going to need the cup of water for later. But I soak it just so that it's softened up and I can use it. And here we go. We're just 
think about where this is going to be touched. All right. So I think about corners. All right. And I think about the middle. I think kind of even, you know, sometimes people when they grab a drawer, they might grab it up top. Not really on the sides, but the sides are going to get touched on the on the piece itself. So when you go to you know, push and pull a drawer out and in from the dresser itself, that's going to get worn too. So you want to think about that. And then I'm going to think about the middle too, because on a, like the handle, like that's going to get a lot of use. So I'm going to antique it there. And I like where that, I like where that is. Antiquing for me is a little bit about like a trust process. And it's a little bit like how I imagine cutting hair is. Or in my case, I sew. I think about it in terms of sewing. Like you can always take more off. And it's hard to put more back on. So once that's all said and done, that's what it's going to look like. All right. And so that's why I mean it's kind of a trust process. You kind of have to look at it and think like, okay, how is this going to dry? How is this going to look? when it's all said and done. So now we're gonna wax it. We have to seal anything with milk paint, all right? So I'm gonna start with some light antique wax. And you know, might have grabbed the wrong brush for this, but it's fine, we're gonna work our way through it. No big deal. So when I go, I'm gonna move from the sides down. And then I'm gonna kind of blend in between. So I'm just gonna move this off to the side so I have better control. So there we go. And you can tell I'm not going super hard on this because we're gonna buff it out later. So don't worry about like, oh my gosh, like there's still like dry spots on there. Don't you worry, I got you. We gotta trust that process. All right, so now that we've got our light wax on, guess what we're gonna do next? I bet you can't guess. Of course it's dark wax, yeah. <laughs> of course, we're gonna go in with our dark wax. All right, dark wax, guys, it's a, it's a tricky one, all right? Because it can go, it can go bad real quickly. It's like a spray tan, really. Like it can go, it can go south fast. <laughs> All right. So we just want to lightly, very light touches. Think, think Bob Ross thoughts. Okay. Think, think gentle touches. All right. Because look at that. I'm barely touching it. And already we're darkening it up. And I'm just touching it up on the corners, maybe some of the sides. And then, just for a little bit of depth too, I'm gonna go in right there on the middle where that handle's gonna be. If you think about how this dresser drawer is gonna be used, right? So it's a lot like the antiquing process. All right, once we've got that all said and done, we're gonna hit it with some dust of ages, or as I like to call it while I stay, why I still have to take Allegra. <laughs> you know, it's bad enough I've got bad allergies, but now I intentionally play with dust. And we're just gonna pounce it in. All right, this might look like a lot, but we are gonna buff it all out. This is to soften it and give it that beautiful patina that we know and love. You can see some of it's getting dusted off already as I'm pouncing it in. That's okay. It's all gonna buff out in the end.
All right. So now you might be looking at this and being like, whoa, that looks like a lot. And you'd be right. You know, it looks intimidating at first. I'm not going to lie to you. But now we're going to go in with our clean. Don't worry. This is clean. It's just, just the way it is. And we're just going to buff and kind of grind in that dust. Spread the wax out evenly. And there we go. Look at that. Look at that piece. All right. Now the last thing we got to do is just slap some hardware on there and we're going to be done. Woohoo! And there we go, guys. I just slapped some new hardware on this. And look at it. It's a totally new piece. And the best part is you can do that too. You too can enjoy the bragging rights. All right? And I hope you had fun learning all about the Caproni plaster wrap today. I sure had fun showing you guys how to do that. All right. If you want to see the full before and after pictures, just head on over to my Facebook and Instagram page. I'll show you the full before, the full after picture of the entire piece. I look forward to seeing you there. All right. Have fun watching the rest of the paint-a-thon. And who knows, maybe I'll see you soon. Bye.